going, wow, it looks so good, guys. Amazing. Oh, wait. What? Hi, guys, and well, welcome back to my art channel. 33 degrees almost in the studio today. And so Carlo is wearing his cooling jacket and I, to be honest, wish I had one as well. We actually try not to move at all right now uh, and Carlo has actually perfected that to be honest. But I've seen that the official Jump With You channel uploaded a new episode and I really wanted to watch it so I thought why don't we watch it together. Also someone on Discord asked me recently who my all-time favorite artist, uh, manga artist is and I think it was pretty easy for me, it's Toriyama. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, it's just childhood to me and I think Toriyama is like a huge part of me becoming an artist. So, I was kind of curious, what are your three, three, three favorite manga artists in the world? If you had to choose, who would it be guys? Let me know down in the comments, maybe it is. The artist we're gonna react to today, Nobuhiro Watsuki, uh, sorry for butchering the name, he is the artist of Ruruni Kenshi. Honestly, I feel like being back in school holding a presentation that I, I haven't learned for. Now finally, let's jump straight in guys. Okay. Okay, so that's good for us. It seems like we see the whole process of this character from the first initial sketch. Uh, that's always really exciting. Actually, also talking about his process, and I wish I would understand a thing, but I don't. He actually started super light, and still he nails like the pose instantly. But he has a really messy approach to it, so he's starting with all kinds of lines, um, and then when he starts finishing the artwork, he probably tries to search for the perfect lines. So okay, he's doing a second sketch now. It's still. A sketch but already a lot more defined and I think that's actually pretty good when you do an uh, initial sketch like he did with a lot of lines a bit messy um, because then when you try to draw over it you can see which line actually looks the best and in art I think it's it's something that happens a lot happy mistakes like I think it's like a Bob Ross quote but it's true sometimes you just have to try things out and try different lines and the one line then maybe be the perfect line and that's awesome when you do like a sketch like that because you can search for the perfect line refining it a bit and wow it looks so good guys amazing oh wait what what look at this he is using actually paper that has a bit of a texture to it so that explains why his strokes are so grainy or patchy he's using also like this this cool inking brush actually i i i think you don't see those manga artists using brushes a lot so that's something new and we learn something new in all kinds of episodes of illustrated reacts also look at like this little ball of like a kitchen roll or a paper or something where he can remove the paint from his brush if there's too much paint on the brush before he puts it down to the paper but that's crazy guys you know what i love about these episodes is that we have watched so many artists drawing already but honestly none of the episodes felt like the same it's like every artist has their own approach and their own yeah, way to draw and paint, even though it's always the same process. The, the drawing with the pencil and then the inking with all kinds of different tools, to be honest. And the coloring is also completely different. Um, I love that one. Uh, usually I don't like textured paper, exactly because your line looks like this. And so you have to really be amazing at this to master this. But I am pretty sure that this will look pretty freaking amazing in the end, so it's just interesting and cool to see that uh, he is using textured paper. Maybe a watercolor paper or something, pretty thick and heavy paper probably. Um, wow, yeah. And he's like, honestly I think that this is also... I think it's a Japanese watercolor brush because they have this super fine tip but it's pretty fat in the back so you can add a lot of water to the brush and still 
do detailed lines. I'm not sure though, maybe this is also like a specific like Japanese brush for, for inking or for um, lettering. I don't know. If you know, let me know down in the comments as well. As you know, with your three favorite artists, guys. Yeah, we actually see a lot of the process and as I said, I wish I would understand what he's talking about right now. I still want to learn Japanese, but it's never gonna happen. Let's let's be honest, let's face it, guys. So I think it's so cool that he uses only one brush for the whole painting. And that's the great thing about that brush, because you can have really thick lines, but also you can draw the tiniest details like the, the nose or the mouth with the brush. So that's that's pretty amazing. And I am really wondering what he uses for coloring. Will he use Copic markers? I would assume now, if he already used this paper, maybe he's coloring with watercolors. That would be awesome, guys. So the, the inking is done, looks pretty amazing. I love that more sketchy style and the grainy lines. They look actually awesome. I, I wouldn't have thought that. Wow, something new that he's doing right now. He's probably like... Uh, using warnings to like save uh, the strokes. Oh no, he's using Copic markers. Okay, maybe his ink is not waterproof or alcohol marker proof. So maybe the the lines would smear if he doesn't do like the spray can uh, varnishing before he starts coloring with Copic markers. Uh, I wish we would have seen uh, him using watercolors that would be pretty cool because it would be so so different from what we've seen so far but yeah i think comic markers is always still amazing you know love my comic markers right now and to be honest those videos they inspired me to buy comic markers yeah look at the texture you know when that was like zoomed out like so look at this when it's zoomed out i feel like it looks almost like a photo, like crazy defaults, looks so realistic. Love the color scheme so far, uh, because he, he's using all those reds and probably um, they, he will bring in the second color right now. Uh, a blue, or this is a cool gray, that could work pretty well. I love the blue eyes to that. So this is like a really cool accent to all the reds in this character, red or orange hair. Uh, a red dress and you know red shadows everything and then those blue eyes they really stand out so that's pretty amazing guys that's his his scarf in the face super iconic looking character to be honest I wonder why I've never heard of, of the, that character before okay now he is probably already done with the coloring and now he starts to go over it finally to with a pen okay that's interesting that's interesting I thought he is done with the inking but but he has seen something that he really doesn't like uh, and yeah he's using whiteout for the highlights of the eyes so yeah it's always great not to just erase the mistakes that you made also to bring in some highlights on the hair and on the eyes that's always, I love, always love to see that. So probably these are already the finishing touches. And what is this? Oh, his stamp as a signature. Look at this. Wow. So cool. And yeah, something completely different. We haven't seen an approach like this before. And I think that's super interesting. So amazing work as always. Those episodes never fail to amaze me. You should definitely check out the original channel from jump for You where they upload those videos. I will see you soon, guys. Uh, stay tuned and bye-bye, guys.